Sony is a relatively new player in serious digital camera market, at least compared to such old, well-established brands like Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Olympus, Pentax, Ricoh, or literally any others out there. Over the past decade, Sony made it from an underdog of professional photography business to top players. Unlike conventional camera brand, Sony does seemingly stupid and weird decisions never seen before. To name a few, they ignore firmware updates for old cameras, they introduce more and more camera lines, every next model has less changes and more recycled tech from before, new models are released faster than they need to be, I mean, the list goes on and on. But surprisingly, it works for them, and even more, everyone else starts to follow their pattern. Let's talk about how Sony managed to be one of the few consumer electronic companies who actually made it in camera business and why are they doing what they're doing. Hello, I'm Sergio and today we'll talk about Sony. Sony made a name for its high-quality electronics, but it appeared as a camera maker relatively not long time ago, at least in terms of interchangeable lens cameras. As always, let's first dive into history a bit. While big film camera makers were either dying off or trying to figure out digital imaging, Sony was pioneering in small consumer digital camera market. We're talking floppy disk Mavicas, camcorders and CCD point-and-shoots. Others were on board as well, and when technology became more available, cheap and proven to be in demand, more and more point-and-shoots came out from companies who actually had absolutely nothing to do with photography. By then, the surviving camera makers are fully invested in DSLRs. Not everyone made it though, Minolta and Konica merged in 2003 in order to survive. It was a struggle for them, and in order to figure out the electronic part of the equation, they invited Sony to help them with their DSLRs. But that didn't help. Konica Minota was losing lots of money due to a legal case lost to Honeywell over AF system patent, as well as poor marketing and management decisions, like uh, they entered the digital too late, they didn't focus on pros, they had poor marketing. But being invested into this cooperation, Sony decided to save the project for itself. They pushed Konica Minota to seize operation and sell the whole business. Later that year, they also bought an 11% stake in Tamron that previously helped Konica Minolta to develop zoom lenses. That's a very Sony style of doing business. They did the same with Nintendo. In case you didn't know, Nintendo once invited Sony to develop a disc reading add-on for their console and after working on it, Sony broke off the partnership and introduced their own game console in 1994. And the rest is history. The Sony PlayStation. Now see the outstanding technical capabilities of Sony's advanced video game system. But anyway, back to acquiring Konica Minolta. This was less than a year before Steve Jobs introduced iPhone that started the dying out of CCD point-and-shoot market. But Sony didn't care about that anymore. They got a ticket into a big boy camera game. But obviously, not just Sony wanted a piece of that pie. Many other electronics companies tried to break into camera market. There was Epson, Samsung, and more recently Xiaomi, Yongnuo, and Sharp. But unlike Sony, all of them failed. And here's why. I love the movie Margin Call. And in one of the scenes, the fundamental truth was spoken. There are three ways to make a living in this business. Be first, be smarter, or cheat. And that's what they did. In 2006, Sony introduced their first interchangeable lens camera, A100, only it was a rebranded Minolta. So their first camera along with 19 lenses and two teleconverters were all inherited from Konica and Minolta, only now they were all rebranded as Sony. You can imagine how great of a start it is compared to others who had to begin from scratch for their own lens mounts and lenses. Unlike major players, Sony realized the potential of mirrorless camera early on. While Canon tried it with EOS M without any kind of enthusiasm or eagerness, Nikon didn't act on it at all. Meanwhile, in 2010, Sony introduced E-mount and first E-mount APS-C cameras NEX3 and NEX5, both dubbed as smallest and lightest interchangeable lens cameras in the world at the time. Later, in 2013, they introduced their first mirrorless full-frame A7 and A7R. And like history showed, being the first really gave Sony a big advantage over Canon and Nikon. 
a big company that makes virtually any kind of consumer electronics, Sony knew the importance of image and sensors that, uh, if you know, are used not only in cameras. So they did their best to invest into own R&D and production of the latest sensors. Now, Sony is one of few producers in the world. What does it mean? It means they can hold back competition and at the same time give advantage to their own products. And last but not least, let's address the questions I asked at the beginning. What is Sony thinking doing what is doing? The short answer to that is, Sony is making not cameras, but products. And they sure know how to make a product. That's why we see so many camera lines and models enter diversification. Before Sony, in DSLR era, the division of model range was quite simple. Uh, you had your entry-level cameras, you had mid-level for amateurs and prosumers, and then you had flagships, basically do-it-all cameras for sports and studio shoots. As Sony started to separate models with high resolution and for video, everyone simply followed the strategy, and the reason is simple. It just works. As used to global markets of electronic products, Sony separates cameras that are designed for sports, for studios, for vloggers, for videographers, cinematographers, beginners, amateurs, high-end consumers, and literally everything in between. At the same time, they ditch support for older cameras, they recycle more and innovate less, all designed to make the decision as hard as possible, to the point where people end up getting two or three cameras. With crazy pace of introducing new models, which is for a moment like up to six cameras a year, Sony seemed odd in the world of camera business, but it is just on par with other global electronics companies. And because their strategy is market and profit driven, this makes their decisions look very stupid to us photographers and also it pushes others to follow because in the end, cameras are also a business and you can't survive unless you make money. And in case of Sony, other brands are under a big pressure. As a conclusion, Sony's success story in camera business is definitely worth admiring. No wonder Steve Jobs was such a fan of Sony's philosophy and strategy. As a person, I love Sony, I use many of their products, but as a photographer, I'm kind of concerned not because of what Sony does, but because what kind of standards they set for others. But in the end, it is what it is, and we'll see what the future holds. This is it for today, I hope you liked this episode. Uh, if you want, you can check out more similar ones on my channel. If you have anything to add, I'll gladly move the discussion of this topic into the comment section down below. And if you appreciate what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can buy me a coffee to at buymeacoffee.com. The link is also down below or in the end of this episode. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.